Hello and welcome to A Piece of Cake, Utah. I'm your host, Katherine O'Donnell, and today I've got something really fun to do for you. We're going to be making some gelatin butterflies and bows and just some different gelatin art that you can put onto your cakes. Uh, gelatin art has been pretty recent, pretty new, and so it's just a lot of fun, and I'll show you some tips and tricks to get exactly what you want. First, we're going to start off with some plain gelatin. You don't want to use any of the flavored kinds. I know it's tempting and they smell good, but it doesn't really work for something like this. So you want to use a plain gelatin. Um, they come in smaller packages or just little envelopes if you want to buy it that way, whichever way. I use a lot of it, so I get the bigger box. Okay, so we've got our powdered gelatin and then water, and that's pretty much it. The recipe, you can find so many different recipes online, in magazines, things like that. The basic recipe is about four parts water to one part gelatin. Um, I actually like to use it a little bit bigger. I, I do about a six to one ratio. I've seen two to one ratios, you know, just whatever, but I find that a little bit more water helps your gelatin to not be so stiff. So we've got our four teaspoons of water, and we'll get our one teaspoon of gelatin here. We'll pour that in. And then you want to mix it up. The gelatin tends to clump as soon as it touches the water, so you want to make sure that you mix it up really good. We've got that, and then we're going to microwave this. Now you're going to microwave it for about 20 seconds to start off with. Um, you want to watch it and be careful because once the water starts to boil, it really foams up and it can be a disaster inside of your microwave pretty quick here. So we'll just watch that and make sure that we don't get a big disaster in our microwave either. Okay, that is really good. Okay, so if you can see this now here. We've got a little layer of foam on the top and our gelatin here on the bottom. So we're going to let that sit for about five to ten minutes. And then as soon as it stiffens up, you can scrape off this top foamy part, the scum as they call it. So we'll let that sit there for a second. Um, this is some gelatin that I just made up this morning. And as you can see, it's nice and stiff and everything. The great thing about this is you can reheat it in the microwave and get it soft again and use it for whatever you want. So we're going to use some purple here. I'm going to stick this back in here. Now the gelatin will not last forever and you do want to keep it in kind of a cool dark place. Your refrigerator works out really good. Um, whatever you can do to keep it nice and cold works out really well. Once it's made up into whatever you're working on, then it's fine. You don't have to store it in the refrigerator or anything. But this can mold after it's been sitting out for a while. So now we've got this all nice and heated up and soft. So even when you have a container, kind of like this one, where it's all stuck to the sides here, I used this one last night, I can reheat this and turn it back into a nice little liquid mass. And if it just seems to not be able to reheat very well, I'll just add a little bit more water and it'll be just fine. Okay, so for the surface that we're going to put this on, you can use just about anything. Um, they do sell little gelatin matte things like this, little molds that you can paint. We've got butterfly wings here and dragonfly wings, um, but I found you can pretty much use anything. I've got these little um, mold impression matte things here that I use for my clay and for my fondant work, and I can just paint things onto here. Um, I've got these really nice clear plastic cutting boards that I got for a dollar <laughs> at the dollar store, and I can just paint out a whole huge sheet on here and use it for my bows or ribbons or things like that. Really, anything goes. The stuff pops right off of whatever it's on. And while we're <laughs> doing this, you'll probably hear, this is a sheet that I made up just this morning. And you can see as it's drying, it's just kind of popping off of this cutting board here. And it makes a little crackling, popping noise. And so uh, the first time I did it, I kind of got scared in my kitchen. I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Something's cracking and breaking. And I didn't realize it was the, the gelatin sheets. So yeah, you can be careful of that. It'll surprise you the first time. OK, so we're just going to do some of everything today. So I've got my little butterfly impression mat here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this on my paintbrush. 
and just paint it out, spread it all out. Um, for coloring your gelatin, I like to add the color to my gelatin before I add the gelatin in the water. So I add the color to my water first and then the gelatin. The paint or the color tends to clump together when you've got the gelatin in the mixture. So I like to just do it when there's just water in there. You don't want to get this too thick and you don't want to get it too thin. If it's too thin, it'll be really brittle and breakable. If it's too thick, then it won't bend very easily, especially when you want to bend it for ribbons or things like that. Um, also, if you want to get it thicker just to get a darker color, then that works really good. Um, some of the best coloring for this type of gelatin art type stuff <laughs> is to use the airbrush colors. Those mix really well with the water and with the gelatin. I'm just using a paste color here and that works out just fine. But if you want a really vibrant color for whatever you're doing and making, use the airbrush colors. They usually work the best. Um, so I'm just painting this on here. I'm getting close to the edges. Sometimes I get over the edges and that's just fine. When these pop right off, you can take your scissors and just trim out the part that you don't want. So I'm going to put my paintbrush down here. You never want to leave your brushes inside the bowl of your gelatin stuff because then it'll get hard and when you go to reheat it, it'll do something bad to your paintbrush in the microwave So, and to your microwave. So this orange one right here, as you can see, it just as soon as it's dry, it just comes right off. And sometimes you got to pull just a little bit to help it the rest of the way. But they just come right off and you've got these beautiful little butterfly wings that you can put onto your, your cakes or your cupcakes or whatever you're working on. So we'll set this aside. And I've got this larger sheet here. And I'll show you how to attach your butterflies in a minute. Oh, our gelatin here is ready to be skimmed. So I'm just going to take this little measuring spoon. It doesn't matter what you use. You can use a spoon, a measuring spoon, your paintbrush, whatever. But you want to just scoop off as much of that scummy stuff on the top as you can. It just doesn't help with your gelatin stuff. There we go. And we've got our little bowl of gelatin ready to paint and use and stuff here. So again, I can just take my, we'll turn this one pink. Take my paintbrush, a clean one, and put it inside of here and just grab a glob of this paste color and mix it in there. And after you've let this sit for about five or ten minutes, if it's kind of hard, really thick and hard and gooey, you'll want to put it back in the microwave and heat it back up. You want this to be as nice and fluid as possible so that whatever you're painting on or anything, you're not going to get big, large clumps of this stuff in your project that you're working on. Okay, so we've got our little pink tray here of of gelatin stuff. We'll maybe use that in a minute. Okay, so I've got a larger sheet here and this one I made, I think I made it last year. It's lasted that long. It's really nice and flimsy. Um, again, this is probably a six to one ratio here that I used six parts water to one part uh, gelatin. This sheet, you can kind of hear it's a little more crinkly, crackly and everything. This was a four to one ratio that I used here. And then this really stiff bow that I made right here with this orange one, this was a two and a half to one ratio. So you can just see, you can play around with the recipe, um, make a stiffer one if you want something to stand upright like these bows. If you want something a little more flimsy that's easier to work with, then you'll want to use a larger ratio of water to, to gelatin. Okay, scissors, there we go. So with this, I'm just going to take my scissors here and I'm going to cut some strips and we're going to make a little bow here like we did with that orange one. And you can measure them or you can just do whatever you want. And they can tear. This one tore a little bit here on the edge. So you just want to be careful as you're going through it. You can trim it up later after you've cut everything out. And with the butterfly wings as well, if there's little pieces on there that you don't want, 
you can trim them off. If you don't have a nice little impression mat to paint all of your stuff on, and you are making just a large sheet, like this yellow sheet or something, I often will print out a picture of a butterfly, a picture of a flower, just things like that, hold it against it and cut the same tooth patterns out together, and that's your butterfly. You don't have to have it perfectly painted on there. You could paint it in that style. You can put the picture of the butterfly underneath it and then put your mat down on top, just one of these large cutting boards, and then paint around the picture as you see it through the mat, things like that. It's really the sky is the limit. These things are so much fun and so easy to work with. They don't really have a flavor to them. Uh, it's just plain gelatin. My kids like to ask, you know, oh, Mom, does that taste good? Can I have some and everything? And I'll tell them, I'm sorry, it doesn't taste very good. <laughs> But they always have to try and see it for themselves. Don't we always have to do that? And that's probably how I got into the whole 6 to 1, 4 to 1 different ratios. I was reading a recipe, and it said 2 and a half to 1, 2 and a half parts water to 1 part gelatin. And I thought, well, what if I did more? What would happen? And played around with it and got a better, easier gelatin to work with. So... Okay, so I've got my strips here. I'll clean that up a little bit. And I'm probably not going to use them this long. I think I'll cut them all in half. And then I can have a cute little bow here. There we go. And some pieces fell off, and that's completely fine. Now, to stick these together, you're just going to use your melted gelatin. And that works as a great little glue. So this is still warm and nice and liquid, so that's good. So I'm just going to paint a little bit on the tips here of this one, fold it over, and kind of hold it for a few seconds, very few seconds. <laughs> there we go. And now it's nice and stuck together in my little bow. Put that down right there and keep going. Um, you can use icing to stick them together. You can use water to stick it together. Anything that you want to. If you just want to make sure that it's kind of the same color, I like to use the gelatin. It's not only does it dry fast, but you know, if I want to add some purple polka dots or just purple stripes or things like that to make my bow kind of stand out and look really cool, then you can do that. If you don't want to see anything, especially when I attach my butterfly wings to the little wire piece that I'm going to stick it to, then I don't want anything to show. And so I'll use the same color. Or water. Water works really good for that. On some cakes, to apply these things to your cakes, you can use royal icing. That's the icing that dries really stiff and hard. I really like using that just to make sure that it's stiff and secure to my cake and doesn't fall off. I really like using the royal icing with butterfly wings because then, especially if there's a slight breeze, it just looks like the butterfly wings are flapping on your cake and it just, oh, it turns out so beautiful. Okay, this one has an edge here. Oops. That's not even, so I'm going to trim that off. Put a little bit more on here. With things like your butterfly wings, if you wanted to add some more detail, for example, oops, this impression mat that I have for the butterflies, it does have the detailed outlines of all the little veins inside of the butterfly wings and things like that. Um, you can use a uh, black little thing of gelatin art. You can do that to paint on there all the extra details. You can use a uh, edible food marker that's black, and you can color on it, outline the details, help it stand out more that way. You can use your royal icing. Uh, because these are so flimsy and soft, I normally don't use any kind of icing because then it just weighs down the gelatin and it doesn't stand up very nicely. This is coming along really good here. You usually want to do, for a bow, usually want to do at least 10 to 15 strips and that will give you plenty to work with 
And this one right here. It's a little bit too thick, so I'm just going to trim that off. There we go. And sometimes I'm working away and I'll accidentally dribble. Like I'm very surprised right now I didn't drop anything on my butterfly wings yet as I'm going back and forth here on, over the top of them. If that happens, you can just take a little cloth or paper towel and get it wet and then wipe away slowly that little drip or dribble that's on top of there. Uh, you can even let it dry completely, but if you catch it right away before it's completely dry, it usually gets off a lot easier. Okay, and this one, it's a little too thick also. I'll paint that one on, and I think that's probably good for this size of bow. And we'll put these aside. Uh, usually, for making a bow, you'll want to have some kind of surface underneath it. Um, let me grab one of these paper towels here. I like to just take a cake round, like a cake board, and put it underneath it just to make sure it has a steady, steady place to sit on. You can use a paper towel, that works just fine. But you don't want to do it immediately on your surface, again, on your table or something in case you dribble, uh, something falls off, or in case these stick to your surface. <laughs> so we'll put all of our bow loops over here. The bigger ones I'll put on the bottom, and the smaller and medium-sized ones will go in the middle. So I usually start off with about six or seven on the bottom. We'll get some more of our gelatin here. We'll just paint the tips and start laying them on top of each other so that they'll start sticking. And you don't have to push them too hard. Once they connect, they will stick. It looks like these two already stuck together. There we go. Just brush a little bit. Doesn't need to be very much. Stick these all together there. Oops. And sometimes they'll stick in the wrong places. Okay, there we go. Let's add a little bit more, make it a little more sticky. And because these are so soft, oh, I'm sticking to things I don't want to. Because these are so soft, you can push them together, mold them together in just the right shape that you want. I really like how forgiving they are because of how soft you can get them. If you get one that's too brittle, it doesn't work out very well that way. Okay. And that, there we go. So we've got our little base here all stuck together. Now I'm just going to start adding more strips to the center to make it puff up more. And a lot of times you'll get a lot of gelatin starting to stick and clump up on your paintbrush, and that's fine. You can just run it under hot water and it'll come right off. Or you can stick it back into your hot bowl of gelatin and it will melt off of here. I seem to be missing a bow loop. There we go. We'll stick it under there. Make sure it's all stuck. Awesome. And I love how quickly these dry and can stand up. A lot of times I'll get an order for a cake or just somebody will come to me with an idea and say, hey, can I have this in two hours? And <laughs> I'll say, great, sure, okay. You know, and you got to find ways to do things very, very quickly. Okay, so this is pretty much it, our cute little bow here. And 
We just stuck it all together and then you would just take some icing or more of this gelatin or royal icing and stick it on top of your cake and it looks really cool, really crisp and clean. And now I'm going to get everything ready to put our butterflies together and we'll be back after this. Mm -hmm. 